Hello students, welcome to Rashid Virtual Academy. I am Dr. Mohammad Nur Alam. It's a second lecture on introduction to accounting. So let's begin with the first slide. Till so far, we have studied the meaning and definition of accounting, accounting cycle definition, and the users of accounting information as well as the objective of accounting. Now the next topic is branches of accounting. So increased scale of business operation has made the management function more complex or you can say the increased competition in the market and make the management function you can say more complex or more difficult. This has given raise to the specialized branch in accounting. The main branches of accounting are financial accounting, cost accounting and management accounting or you can say the changing business scenario over the centuries give rise to specialized branches of accounting which could cater to the changing requirements. The branches of accounting that we already discussed is financial accounting, cost accounting and management accounting. Now let us understand these terms. First start with the financial accounting. The accounting it is concerned with the recording of business transactions in the books of account in such a way that operating result of a particular period or you can say profit and loss for that period and financial position on particular date can be known or you can say the accounting system concerned only with the financial state of affairs and financial result of operations is known as financial accounting. It is the original form of accounting. It is mainly concerned with the preparation of final financial statement for the use of outsiders like creditors, debenture holders, investors and financial institutions. The financial statement for example the profit and loss account or income statement and the balance sheet show them the manner in which operation of the business have been conducted during a specified period. Now the cost accounting. Cost account generally relates to collection, classification and ascertainment of the cost of production or job undertaken by the firm. Or you can say in view of the limitation of the financial accounting in respect of information relating to the cost of individual products, cost accounting was developed. It is that branch of accounting which is concerned with the accumulation or you can say collection and assignment of assignment of historical cost to units of product and department primarily for the purpose of valuation of stock or inventory and measurement of profit. Cost accounting seeks to ascertain the cost of unit produce and sold or services rendered by the business unit with a view to exercising control over these costs to assess profitability and efficiency of the enterprises. It generally relates to the future and involves an estimation of future cost to be incurred. The process of cost accounting based on the data provided by the financial accounting. Or you can say cost accounting is generally used to find out the cost of production means if you are production product if you are producing something what is the total cost incurred by you now management accounting it relates to use of accounting data collected with the help of financial accounting and cost accounting for the purpose of policy formulation planning control and decision making by the management or you can say it is an accounting for the management for example accounting accounting which provides necessary information to the management for discharging its functions according to the anglo-american council on productivity management accounting is the presentation of accounting information in such a way as to assist management in the creation of policy and day-to-day -day operation of an undertaking. It covers all arrangement and combination or adjustment of the orthodox information to provide the chief executive with the information from which he can control the business. For example, information about funds, costs, profit, etc. 
Management accounting is not only confined to the area of cost accounting but also covers other areas such as capital expenditure decision, capital structure decision and dividend decision as well. Now, the next slide is basic accounting term. So understanding of the subject becomes easy when one has the knowledge of a few important terms of the accounting. In accounting, there is different important terms just like any language. So if you understand those words, those terms, it is easy to understand the accounting. First, start with the transactions. So transactions are those activities of business which involve transfer of money or goods or services between two persons or two account. For example, purchase of goods, sale of goods, borrowing from bank, lending of money, salaries paid, rent paid, commission received and dividend received. So transaction generally if you know the definition of accounting, the definition of accounting is it is identifying recording, classifying and summarizing the financial transaction. So transaction here means those activity or you can say uh, where this transaction means it's a financial transaction and only those transaction we will include in the accounting that can be measured in terms of money. Transaction are generally two types. First is cash and second is credit transaction. So cash transaction is one where cash received or payment is involved in the transaction means here cash transaction means those activity where the cash is involved either you receive the cash or either you pay the cash for example when Rahim buys goods from Kareem paying the price of the goods by cash immediately it is called cash transaction. Now the credit transaction Credit transaction is one where cash is not involved immediately but will be paid or received later. Means in this transaction, in this activity, no cash involved immediately but it will be received or paid later. In the above example that we have given in the cash transaction, if Rahim doesn't pay cash immediately but promise to pay later is called credit transaction. Proprietor. A person who owns a business is called proprietor. He contributes capital to the business with the intention of earning profit or you can say owner. Proprietor is also called, called owner it means the person who owns the business is called owner. So proprietor and the owner is the same thing. Now capital. Capital it is the amount invested by the proprietor or the owner in the business. This amount is increased by the amount of profit earned and the amount of additional capital introduced. Means whatever amount invested by the owner into his company is called capital and it is increased if there is any profit. Then profit increase the capital at the same time if additional amount invested by the owner into his or her business is will increase the capital of the company. It is also decreased by the amount of losses incurred and the amounts withdrawn. If there are any loss in any year, it will decrease the capital. At the same time, if any amount withdrawn by the owner for his personal use, the capital will be decreased. For example, if Ali starts business with $5 lakh, his capital would be $5 lakh in the company. Now, come to the assets. In general sense, assets means properties. So assets are the properties of every description belonging to the business. Assets means this is the property of the business. Example, cash in hand, plant and machinery, furniture and fittings, bank balance, debtors that is also known as account receivable, bills receivable, stock of goods, investment, goodwill are the example for asset. Asset can be classified into tangible and intangible asset. First, tangible asset. Tangible assets are those having physical existence means it can be seen and touched but it can be measured in terms of money. For example, plant and machinery, cash. This tangible asset are those assets whom we can see, we can touch and have a physical existing just like 
plant or machinery, cash, table, furniture, LCD TV, etc. Now come to the intangible. So if you see the intangible meaning in the definition, it means those things which doesn't have any physical existence means you cannot see, you cannot touch. So intangible asset are those asset having no physical existence but their possession give rise to the some rights and benefits to the owner. It cannot be seen and touch. Just like example is goodwill, patents, trademark are some of the example. Now come to the liabilities. Liabilities generally mean loan that is taken by the company or the organization. So liabilities refer to the financial obligation of a business means the loan that company have to pay, the business have to pay in the future. These denote the amounts which a business owes to others. For example, loans from the banks or other person, creditors for goods supplied or you can say accounts payable, bills payable, outstanding expenses means expenses that is due but not paid and bank overdraft etc. Now come to the next term and that is drawing. Drawing means it is the amount of cash or value of the goods withdrawn from the business by the proprietor for his personal use or you can say any amount or any goods that is withdrawn or taken by the owner for his personal use from the business is called drawing and drawing always decreases the capital so if any drawing in any year or any month is given in the account it means it will decrease the capital Dators. It is also known as account receivable. A person, person may be individual or firm who receive a benefit without giving money or money's worth immediately but liable to pay in the future or in due course of time is a debtor. Means we sold some goods to some person on credit basis so that person for me is called data. The data are shown as an asset in the balance sheet. This account receivable or the data is always the property of the company. That's why that is shown on the asset side of the balance sheet. For example, Mr. Ali bought goods on credit from Mr. Bashir for $10,000. So Mr. Ali is a debtor to Mr. Bashir till he pays the value of the goods. Now creditor it is just opposite of the debtors. Creditors is also known as accounts payable. A person who gives a benefit without receiving money or money's worth immediately but to claim in the future is a creditor. Means if you purchase something from some person and you didn't pay the amount but you promise that you will pay after some time so that person is creditor for you. The creditor are shown as a liability in the balance sheet means if you purchase something on a credit basis now it's your obligation to pay that amount later in the future that's why it's a liability for the company and this liability just like a loan will be shown in the balance sheet in the above example in the case of data Mr. Bashir is a creditor to Mr. Ali till he receives the value of the goods. So for Mr. Ali, Mr. Bashir is the debtor and now for Mr. Bashir, Mr. Ali is a creditor or accounts payable. Now to the next term is purchases. Purchases refers to the amount of goods bought, bought by the business for the resale or for the use in the production means for the production or for the resale of the goods whatever you buy is, is called purchases so purchases goods purchased for cash are called cash purchase means if you purchase goods on cash basis you paid the cash immediately that is called cash purchases but if you haven't paid cash immediately but you will pay in the future that will called credit purchases and always 
total purchases include both cash and credit purchase means in any year if you add cash and credit purchases you will find out total purchases of the company in that particular year purchase return or returns outward when the goods are returned to the supplier due to defective quality not as per the terms of purchase it is called as purchase return means when we purchase goods and that goods are of defective quality so we have to return that goods so whatever the value of the goods that you are returning to the supplier is called purchase return it is also called returns outward because goods is going out from the company to the supplier that's why it is called returns outward to find net purchases in the company because whenever we make the accounting we have to take the net value so when we have to find out the net purchases purchases return or return outward it's all always deducted from the total purchases means if you minus this returns purchase return from the total purchase you will find out the net purchases in that company for that particular period the next term is sales sales refers to the amount of goods sold that are already bought or manufactured by the business means if you are manufacturing goods and you are selling to the customer so whatever amount you receive that is the value of the sales and when goods are sold for cash they are cash sales means when you sold the goods to the customer on cash basis and customer paid you the cash immediately that is called cash sales but if goods are sold and payment is not received at the time of sale means if you sold the goods to any person and you are not receiving any cash immediately but you will receive in the future that sale is called credit sale so whenever we have to make the account we have to take total sales value and total sales always include both cash and credit sales now sales returns or returns inward when goods are returned from the customer due to defective quality or not as per the terms of sale it is called sales returns or returns out inward means when we some when you when you sold some goods to the customer and that goods is of defective quality so customer will return the goods so whatever is the value of that returned goods is called sales return or return inward you can say why we call this thing as returns inward because goods is coming into the company that's why we are using the word inward to find out net sales sales return is deducted from the total sales so whenever we are making the accounting we have to take the net and exact value of the sales to find out the profit and loss to find out the net sales we have to minus we have to deduct the sales return from the total sales of the company now come to the next term and that is stock stock is also called as inventory a stock includes goods unsold on a particular date means suppose we are making the accounting from 1st january to 31st december so 31st december is always the last date so whatever is stock of the goods is unsold on 31st december is called the value of the stock the value of the inventory a stock may be opening stock also and the closing is stock so whatever we have on the first date of the year maybe it is 1st january so it's called opening stock or opening inventory or beginning inventory and whatever we have on the closing date of the year is called closing stock or ending inventory or ending stock so term opening stock means goods unsold in the beginning of the accounting period means it is the closing stock of the previous year that we have to transfer to the next year so closing stock of the previous year becomes opening stock of the next year whereas the term stocks include goods unsold at the end of the accounting period so it is important point that stock of the previous year closing stock of the previous year is always the opening stock of the next year for example if 4000 units purchased at the rate of 20 dollar per unit remain unsold so closing stock will be 80000 dollar 4000 into 20 is equal to 80000 means 80000 value of the stock is unsold on the last date so this is called closing stock and this 
closing stock will be opening stock for the next year so that's what is written here this will be opening stock of the subsequent year now come to the revenue revenue means the amount receivable or realized from the sale of goods earning from interest dividend commission etc revenue means revenue is different from the profit revenue means total amount that we receive or will receive any year in any particular year from the sale of goods or earning from interest dividend and commission is called revenue means total amount receivable is called revenue in any particular year expense it is the amount is spent in order to produce and sell the goods and services or you can say expenses means the total amount that you invested in order to produce or manufacturing something and after that when we have to sell that goods so whatever expenses we incurred from producing goods to the selling of the goods is called expenses for example for manufacturing you need raw materials so if you purchase the raw material that is expenses for you you need the office staff you need the worker so whatever salaries and wages you are paying to the office staff and the worker is the expenses for the company for that particular period now income income is the difference between the revenue and expenses mean whatever amount you receive and whatever amount you invested in producing or selling of the goods if you compare this thing you will find out the income of the company for the particular period It means income is always equal to revenue minus expenses now come to the next term and that is voucher it is a written document in support of a transaction for any financial transaction whatever written document is there is called voucher it is a proof that particular transaction has taken place for the value is stated in the view future means it provides us the proof that some transaction has taken place and the value of that transaction is all lady stated in that voucher it may be there is in there is different type of the voucher and it may be in the form of cash receipt invoice cash memo bank pay slip etc voucher is very much important thing or it is very necessary if you want to audit the account in the ending of the year invoice invoice is a business document which is prepared when one sell goods to another means if i am selling one to goods to the another person i have to issue the invoice for that the statement is prepared by the seller of the goods so important point is invoice always prepared by the seller of the goods and it contains the information relating to the name and address of the seller and the buyer and the date of sale and the clear description of the goods with quantity and price so invoice includes everything the name of the sellers and buyers the address of the seller the buyer's address when the sale took place happen or the total description of the goods with price now come to the next term and that is received received is an acknowledgement for cash received it is issued to the party paying cash received from the basis for entries in the cash book received is acknowledgement means whenever we receive cash we have to give the acknowledgement in writing and that thing is called received and it is always the basis if you want to prepare the cash book for the company to find out how much cash we receive and how much cash we paid now the next term is account account is a summary of a relevant business transaction at one place relating to person asset expenses or revenue name in the heading an account is a brief history of the financial transaction of a particular person or the item or you can say account is the summary of total business transaction it can relate to any person you can open the account of any person about his expenses payment received 
you have to open the account for the asset means how much amount you per paid for the purchasing of asset for the sale of asset same for the expenses and the revenue an account has always have two side first is debit side and the credit side that is all for now students thanks for watching our videos for more videos visit www.rashidvirtualacademy.org